Hey, what's up, folks? Gray Man here with the Sunday Shift Report. Welcome everyone to it. Um, hope everybody's doing well this Sunday afternoon or evening or whenever this video happens to find you. And uh, I guess I'm going to try to keep up on saying this in the beginning because uh, there's a lot of folks that are new to the channel and uh, you know watch a lot of my prepping videos and, and food videos, food storage, uh, prepper pantry stuff, all that kind of stuff like that. But I want to let you guys know uh, on the Sunday Shift Report, we do talk politics. We do talk current events. Uh, things that are in the news. So we kind of focus on that on Sunday. Uh, so that's why it's called the Sunday Chef Report. Uh, some people wonder what that means. Uh, most people are probably familiar with it now, but SHTF means, you know, the poop hits the fan per se. Uh, and, you know, like I said, I think we're getting close to 50 episodes. Uh, and I've asked folks in the past if they want me to, you know, convert this into a different type of content. But people seem to like to get the news specifically or my take on the news. Uh, from myself and other channels like myself. Uh, and uh, like I said, kind of been thinking about the whole new catchphrase is, you know, I report, uh, you know, and and you decide. That's that's as simple as I can put it. Uh, I think that was, it was, a, I think another person had come up with that a while back on one of the mainstream news is it, it might have been Fox or, or, or somebody uh, a long time ago, but they said we report and uh, you decide. But I, I'm, since I'm just by myself, I report and you decide uh, on the articles that I go over. Now, what I always suggest to folks is, you know, anything that I go over is, is speculative in the aspect of, you know, what I'm saying and what I'm thinking. Also, it's just an observation that I see, and these are my opinions and my opinions only. So that being said, uh, take everything I say with a grain of salt. You know, you don't have to, you know, focus on specifics. I know sometimes I'll say things that might upset people and, uh, and not so much others. Some, but most folks agree. But that being said, uh, so if you are new to the channel and you're just having to catch this first this first video that you've ever seen by Gray Man, go check out the rest of the channel. We have a lot of great content on there, uh, all kinds of different uh, uh, preparedness material. So please check that out. And uh, if you get a chance, get that thumbs up. I truly appreciate it if you're here on the premiere. So today we got a bunch of things to go over. We're not gonna. I hope it doesn't go long, long. I know. I know some of you folks like it when I go almost an hour, but I'm trying to keep them down around 30 minutes or so. But We'll see where it goes. Uh, and some things are, you know, important. Some things are not so important. These are just some of the things that either irk me and I want to discuss it and uh, that kind of stuff. So get your coffee if you can. Take a sip, relax, and enjoy the show. First of all, we're going to get into a few things. Uh, you know, I, I really want to show you this video before I get into uh, an article or articles uh, this is kind of creepy, to be honest with you. I was going to show this Thursday, but I forgot. I, and I watched the replay on Thursday, and I remembered when I said something about talking about it, and then I just, of course, lost my train of thought and went deep into the whole water filtration and food stuff, which I really enjoyed that. I think we had a good chat. We had over 260 people in that live stream, and a lot of folks uh, felt that they've garnered some, some great information out of it, either refresher or some of the new preppers have said, man, I didn't know about this, and uh, thanks for turning me on to this. So I think that's kind of cool. I feel like something's in my eye. But anyways, eh, long day. You know how it goes. All right, folks, so let's kind of, let you know, here's you're not seeing this in the news that much anymore. Actually, let me stop myself and show you that video before I get lost in our stuff here. Let me move this around. Let me get my mouse here. And uh, I want you to check this video out. Uh, and the reason I think this video is a little bit creepy is because this this uh this humanoid robot is going to be uh showcased on the consumer electronics show 2022 a lot of you folks who do use fast food joints or go to some of the stores where they have automated checkouts i personally think this may be the future what you might be seeing because as there, you know, this whole labor shortage thing, and I dug into it a bit, and I've learned a little bit more about that and why that labor shortage exists, uh, but we'll have to save that for a live stream because it's a lot to go into, and uh, like I said, some of it's speculative in that aspect, but let me show you this picture and just watch it, and then for the first second, I'm like looking at it like, oh, it looks pretty normal until I see the expressions and the movement of this thing, so let me go ahead and play this real quick, and uh, let me know what you think. Looks normal here, right? Kind of creepy, but wait till it opens its eyes. Wow. That just looks uh, creepy to me. 
it's like it's like trying to understand itself. It's trying to look at itself. I mean, the ins expressions are just wow. And then it notices the camera. Looks sad. Like it's literally showing expressions with a hint of emotion. Even though I know it's just a machine. But I don't know. What is your guys' take on that? To me, it was uh, pretty creepy to say the least. Uh, and some of the other folks that I've showed it to think it's really creepy as well. But that might be the future of what we see uh, in taking over jobs. Uh, first, it might just be customer service related stuff or fast food joints or who knows what they're going to. And then I use this, I use the, the thought process of taking, I don't know if you guys have heard of Watson, which is an AI machine run by IBM who plays chess players and does a bunch of other things, who has beat many renowned chess players. And I'm thinking if, if they imagining taking that AI technology and putting it into a machine like this, Scary thought, folks. And I know some of you guys are going to say, like, what, Terminator? Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? I mean, if, I guess if they outfit it with, you know, some sort of bulletproof chassis and weapons and all that stuff like that. But I don't know. Just food for thought, right? Food for thought. But I wanted to share that before I get uh, getting into this whole uh, mainstream media not really uh, showing you what you need to be shown. Uh, like I said, it seems like, have you heard of the container ships? Uh, anything about them lately? Like, it's just kind of like off the map. We are focusing on, uh, what are they focusing on in the news? Uh, uh, Omicron and, and this and that and mandates and all that stuff like that. And we'll touch on some of that. But <laughs> that's what it seems that's going on. And also, I have some, some things that have blown me away. Something that's happening in Paris, uh, which will come to a door near you. Watch and see, and I'll explain. Uh, also, Trudeau and what he said just uh, irked me, and I'm pretty sure a lot of Canadians out there will agree. Uh, what else do we got on here? Uh, we're going to talk about some Russian troop movements. Uh, and uh, the organization, uh, BLM, and I know it's a very touchy one, right, when we talk about stuff like this. Um, but, uh, you know, with the founder, what she's done for herself and not for her community, as well as uh, some, I either got it in my Discord or sent it to me email, uh, but something... Uh, that someone who is in a, a Charlie Victor camp in Australia, I think the video has probably gone viral at this point, I think, uh, but you know how things can be suppressed coming out of Australia, but once it gets out here, uh, to the rest of the world, we try to share it. So let's uh, let's start off with the whole uh, the ship crisis, and uh, man, what Nevada's doing too, man. We got, Like I said, we got some things to go over. Let's just jump into it and stop rambling, Gray. All right, so let's bring up this first article here for you folks. It says, U.S. ship logjam worsens as Corn Pop's attempt to save Christmas fails. Because you know he's always getting up there on the on the stage and the earpiece and somebody reading something to him and all the stuff like that and jumbling up his words. So, in this article it says, uh, President Corn Pop told America that the supply chain is very strong. It's, it's in very strong shape, guys. Very strong shape ahead of Christmas. Speaking from the White House Wednesday, Corn Pop said uh, his administration has partnered with the private sector to ensure the store shelves are stocked. But new shipping data shows uh, snarled supply chains are worsening. And it could be, uh, it could take months to un untangle, untangle them. Sorry, I thought it said something else, but untangle them. New shipping data from the busiest U.S. port complex, Los Angeles and Long Beach, California, show 96 container ships idled offshore waiting to unload cargo. And I'm going to show you that graph here in a second, but here's here's what they're doing. They're pushing these ships further offshore because they figure out of sight, out of mind. Uh, doesn't that always work well with the media and the big brother and those folks that handle this stuff? Anyways, Freight Waves' Greg Miller described a new queuing system for vessels uh, as pure optics, we, uh, which reduces the number of ships offshore off Los Angeles, Long Beach, Los Angeles and Long Beach, he says ships are being placed in holding patterns further out in the ocean where they are out of sight and out of mind to prevent attention-grabbing aerial imagery of container ship log jams. The new, que the new queuing system has divided uh, vessels into a couple of categories, 40 ships anchored within 40 miles of the ports and 56 outside that perimeter, with the line continuing to get longer at the U.S. largest container uh, containerized ports. Uh, 
Corn Pop's miracle to save Christmas appears to be failing. What also, uh, and to finish up this article, it says, what also uh, worsening our wait times. It now takes up to 21 days, three weeks, three weeks uh, for a vessel to enter the Twin Ports. That's up from seven in August. So it used to be a week. Now it's up to three weeks, folks. So we go back to some of my videos and my previous content. I said things will not get better. I was hoping they would, but they not. And it seems to be getting worse and worse. And uh, they're not sharing that with the generalized public. There's no like mainstream news out there, you know, staying on top of this, letting you guys know that we're in for a crisis moving into 2022. So that's why like the prepper haul that I did, that's why the prepper hauls that I do are kind of heavy, I guess. I don't, to me, they're not heavy. To me, they're just what I need uh, and why I do what I do because I have a premon no, no, say premonition, but I have this mindset that it's going to get worse as things progress. Whenever they tell you it's getting better, it's usually the opposite. And uh, just to kind of show you, I'm going to throw up the uh, quick graph of the uh, of these ships here. But it says that uh, <laughs> separated at birth. <laughs> I like that. Anyways, container ships wait almost 21 days on average to enter the port of L.A. And as you can see back in February, where it was, right around 7, it looked like it got a little, better, better, a little bit better between June 7th and around August. And then, of course, uh, we started moving into September. And as you see, as of November 26th, 21 days, folks. So it's not like I'm making something up. It's not like I'm just pulling things out of thin air. This is material that's reported that you guys can find online if you look in the right spots. And that's the, cute, the, 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 the huge thing is looking in the right spots or following content creators like myself and others. All right, so let's move on from that. Speaking of ships, I do want to touch, uh, touch something on ships because remember when uh, back was it in 2020? Whenever the, the, the whole uh, Charlie Victor thing started, uh, the whole cruise ship and stuff like that, and those people were stuck out there, and no one wanted to accept them in their ports. Well, here we are, and uh, here we are again. Here we are again. I don't know how it's going to play out this time, but, excuse me, I guess that was lunch. My apologies. But let me throw this article up real quick. Uh, so it says here, the Charlie Victor uh, outbreak reported on U.S. cruise ship despite fully despite fully victored passengers. Hmm. I like to state those keywords because they're fully victored up. So it says at least uh, 10 cases of the Charlie Victor have been reported on Norwegian cruise line. Uh, the, the, oh man. Norwegian Norwegian Cruise Line ship disembarking New Orleans, officials said. I don't know why I get all tripped up on that. But anyways, it says all crew members and passengers are fully victored up for the Charlie Victor, said the Louisiana Department of Health. The agency did not real, uh, reveal the conditions of those who were infected with the uh, Charlie Victor. Uh, but Governor John Bell Edwards and the Louisiana Department of Health and the City of New Orleans and the Port of New Orleans are aware and they're working closely with the CDC. Woohoo! Yay! Good to hear that, huh? To initiate existing Charlie Victor agreements and protocols with the cruise line, the Louisiana Department of Health said in a statement. The Norwegian breakaway had left New Orleans on November 28th, making stops in Mexico, Honduras, and Belize. The ship is set to reach New Orleans on Sunday, according to its itinerary. Authorities with the Department of Health said more than 3,200 people were on board the ship. I guess we shall see. We shall. We shall see. <laughs> oh man, we shall see uh, what transpires once this reaches the port. Maybe it already did. Maybe this news is old. I don't know. It's dated December 5th, so I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out, folks. Something to keep an eye on. We'll see what they do with it and move on from that. Let's kind of jump over. Before we go overseas, of course, we're going to jump here. We're going to stay here in the U.S. Uh, oh, one thing I did want to share that I was excited about. This was like the best news I've heard all week, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'll show you the article. Oh, it says, Woman's new accusation against Chris Cuomo led to CNN firing... Uh, so Cuomo is not suspended anymore. He is now fired. Uh, so it looks like the Cuomo brothers just just keep on getting themselves into trouble. Oh boy, oh boy, has your folks turned on you. 
So now you now not you you don't have anybody on the right liking you, and now most of the people on the left, man, they don't like you either. So who are you left with? Sucks to be you. Anyways, to go into this whole article says Chris Cuomo, uh, Mr. Steroid himself, was fired by CNN on Saturday, is facing an allegation of sexual misconduct, according to a lawyer who is representing a client accusing the former anchor. Man, the two brothers, man, they just, uh, they're married and have families, but uh, they just keep on doing bad stuff. Maybe they need to take a moment and possibly uh, open that good book and read a little bit of uh, The Lord and, and uh, get educated. Anyways, Deborah Katz, the attorney, told the New York Times that she contacted CNN last week about the client and with the accusation of misconduct by Cuomo. Katz also represents Charlotte Bennett, who accused Cuomo's brother, Andrew, the shining star that he is, of misconduct in a separate case. So the same woman and two brothers. That's just absolutely uh, disgusting. Anyways, Katz told uh, other news outlets on Sunday that the revelation led to his firing on Saturday, which was yesterday. Good riddance. Good riddance, I say, right? Maybe you guys feel the same. I thought he was a douchebag. You know, that's just how I felt about it, or felt about it, yeah. Get it right, Gray. All right, so before I get into uh, Nevada, let's jump over to Pennsylvania. I want to show you guys a couple things in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is possibly headed for a dark winter. You hear that term all the time, uh, and some people it means one thing, and some people it means another. Uh, and the way I guess I'm relating to it is power. Uh, possible power, I don't want to say power shortages, but the cost of power is skyrocketing. Inflation is taking a hold of this country. So what does that mean for the folks that are making the money to pay these bills when they're going to jump as high as maybe 50% to where they currently are as of December? Let's bring the article up. And I know some of you folks who watch, the, uh, watch my channel live in Pennsylvania. Let me know down in the comments uh, if you guys are seeing any of this happen yet or if you're experiencing this. Uh, and we'll talk again next month or by the end of this, but yeah, by, we'll talk in 2022 here in January and see if this transpires and turns into what it's expected to turn into. Anyways, uh, dark winter looms for Pennsylvania as power bills set to soar. Uh, power prices in some parts of Pennsylvania are set to jump up as much as 50% beginning this month, according to the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission, the PUC. Most Pennsylvanians regulated electric, electric utilities are adjusting the price they charge for the generation portion of customers' bills on December 1st, which were on December 5th, so four days ago, this took place for non-shopping customers. I don't understand what non-shopping customers means, but maybe I'm just not the brightest uh, one in the box. <laughs> also known as the price uh, to compare the PTC, the PTC averaged 40 to 60 percent of the customer's total utility bill. However, this percent varies by utility and by the level of individual customer usage, PUC said in a press release. So let's take a look at this. Maybe some of you guys, because I I'm, I didn't know that Pennsylvania has this many power companies in it because here in Florida, we're kind of like, we only have a few, put it that way. And FPL is the monopoly that controls here in Florida. And trust me, they're, they're degenerates. Uh, and I can go on and on in my history with that company. I, or I, don't, I know when I was in Orlando, I did use OUC and uh, Kissimmee, KUA or something like that, which... A little bit cheaper and whatnot, but here in the county that I'm living, we don't have a choice. It's you either have them or you have no power, which is why I would love to be totally off-grid if ever possible. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I was going to get into something else, but I don't want to get sidetracked from what I'm doing. So let's kind of pull this up and let's talk about these companies here. As you can see on the screen, it says Citizens Electric up uh, 6.9 cents. Uh, to 7.9 cents. Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce this that name, whatever that is, but it's up from uh, 7.41 cents to 7.98 cents. But and and it goes so on and so on. But the main one is Pike County Light Power and uh, and Power. So PCLP. I don't know how many guys depend on Pike, but they have one of the largest increases uh, for power, up from 6.5 to 34 cents to 9.796 cents per kilowatts. So depending on how much kilowatts you use, if your bill is, if you use so many kilowatts and your bill is this, 50.2% 50 is almost doubling your bill. Or yeah, doubling because if it's not, yeah, doubling your bill. I think I should be right, right? It's not 100%, but it's 50%, so it's getting up there regardless. 
Uh, and as you can see, the rest of them around there. And I'm assuming Pike is probably, you know, the main hubs, the big cities. That's my assumption, but I don't know. I don't live in Pennsylvania, so I couldn't tell you. But all in all, to me, I was looking. I just was pondering because I had that whole mic issue on the stream <laughs> Thursday. I was like, is this thing recording? I wanted to make sure before I go through this whole thing. Anyways, folks, let me know if you guys, whoever lives in Pennsylvania, uh, how's things going out there? You know what I mean? Are you guys seeing some of this stuff like that? Are you guys seeing, I, mean, I, guess, I guess you won't know until the end of this month, so we'll talk about that. Now let's jump over to Nevada real quick. Uh, and I, I don't know the politics in Nevada, but evidently the politics, if this is happening, it doesn't make any sense at all. But as you can see in this article here that I threw up on the screen, it says Nevada becomes first state to impose surcharge on the unvictored workers. This is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. Uh, and it goes to show how where things are going and what states, certain states can do. And that's why people say, this is why I love the state of Florida currently. Right now we have a pretty decent governor in the state who is for the people. Uh, so that being said, he is trying to do everything to make things at least halfway decent in the state or as best as he can. There's things that he could do better, especially when it comes to the Second Amendment, which I'm not, you know, I, I, I wish these policies would change in this state. Uh, they're not horrible, but they could be a lot better. Anyways, let's get back on track. It says Nevada on Thursday became the first U.S. state to impose a surcharge on workers who have not gotten the Charlie Victor uh, through the penalty, uh, though the penalty doesn't take effect until middle of next year, which kind of made me question something, but we'll touch on that at the end of this article. It says all but two members of the state's Public Employees Benefit Program Board, the PBE, PEB, voted during a meeting to approve a surcharge of $55 a month on the unvictored workers. Here's where I highlighted. The approved proposal also stipulates a surcharge of $175 a month for, uh, for workers, spouses, partners, and dependents 18 or older. So 55, and then if you're married, uh, it's another 175, so 75 plus 55, that's what, 205. Uh, and then let's say you have, uh, I don't know, uh, an older child you know, in college, you know, or whatever the case may be, or an uncle or aunt, who knows how that plays out. Uh, and then you're tacking on another 175, so you're up to like 355. Uh, coming out of your check a month, uh, and it says it could be adjusted down the road, uh, which means adjusted down the road means it doesn't mean it's going to go down. It could be going up, so we don't know. But anyways, it says the surcharges will go into effect on July 1st, 2022. I don't know how the Nevadans feel about that, but that is absolutely ridiculous and stunning to say the least. Uh, now my question is, is uh, what do they know that we don't? This is in July of next year. So uh, what, what are they saying? That things aren't going to get any better? Is there going to be another variant? Is there going to be something else that's going on with this whole Charlie Victor situation all the way through July of next year? This is These are the things that when I read something like this, this is the aha moment like, hmm. Why not till next year? Uh, what, what, do you, what do they know that we don't know? I, you know, I like to hear a lot of people like to say the word pandemic, which could be a possibility, folks. Uh, it's not to say that it doesn't exist, but there is definitely a huge monster of money behind this. There's a big bankroll. There's something going on way beyond what we see on the back end because look at Pfizer stock. Look who owns Pfizer stock. They're making a killing making a monster killing off this stuff. I think the average dose was like 12 to $15. Uh, there's a whole report on it um, that I read. What, it, what uh, us, the taxpayers, are paying for the government to give this stuff away and, and get people dosed up. Anyways, I thought I would share that just because I was just like pretty shocked of, of that happening in Nevada. So that's in one state. You don't think maybe California, New York, the people that are hurting financially are going to be like, hey, that sounds like a great idea. Let's impose that. Let's push these folks even harder. Let's hit them where it hurts the most, their pockets. The less money they have, the less, more money we take and the less they have, the more they depend on us. Just my opinion, folks. Hmm. Also, you know, I came across this yesterday. Uh, I got a notification on my phone, and I was like, who is this? So I'm not 100% sure. I did some research, but the research may be skewed. A lot of you folks, I don't know if you've heard of an organization called the Patriot Front. 
I dug into their stuff and I see that they've been taken down off all social media other than let's say bit shoot and a couple other places. But I was trying to figure out who they were, and everywhere I looked, it said they were some sort of huge right-wing extremist, racist, neo-Nazi, blah, 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 on and on and on, and every, fuck, every, every article that I could find, you know what I mean? So I don't know. I don't know, but I do, I do want to bring it up because they marched uh, on the, in D.C. yesterday, and don't get me wrong, and, and, and Antifa was very upset. They could not, uh, uh, I guess, hustle up a bunch of folks to to, I guess, go against them or whatnot. There was a few out there, but let me show you a quick video of what I'm talking about. And like I said, I'm going to have to do more research on this organization and this group. Uh, I read a little bit about it, and it was part of another group, and the guy that founded the group, and this and that. And there's just a lot of misinformation out there, so I don't like to really say anything until I totally understand who they are, what they represent, and so on and so forth. Maybe you folks are more familiar with it. Um, I know they've done a lot more. They've been in Colorado. They've been in Florida. They've been all over the place. Pennsylvania. They've been in a bunch of places. But let's take a look real quick. And to me, it looks like a pretty large group. Uh, they're in uniforms. They have shields. Uh, they are marching. And they are saying a few things. But uh, that was just a quick clip that I got sent to me. So I was curious. So, of course, me being who I am, I'm doing research. Well, who are these folks? What do they stand for? You know, uh, you know, are they about the Constitution? Uh, and then when I started looking up stuff, you know, everything I could find was negative, negative, negative. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, but it's, I give them credit for taking the, you know, to, to go out there. And it's usually we see the opposite that's out there marching. So I don't know. I guess it'll be... Uh, Eventually, it'll roll out, and we'll know what they stand for and all that. Maybe some of you folks do, and you can send me an email, a little bit more information on the Patriot front, um, and kind of inform me uh, as I do my research as well. All right. And I know some folks – oh, I wanted to – like I said, real quick before we uh, leave uh, a couple of things, I want to show you uh, this here before we get into some clips here. But let me <laughs> – this was on the, uh, I think it's the New York Post. Let me throw it up. Yeah, this is on the New York Post uh, on their front page. Uh, I can't see when it was dated. Uh, it says Sunday, April 11th, 2021. So this was off the New York Post. It was sent to me, and I thought I would just share it just because I thought it was quite intriguing. I was aware of the one of the houses, but I wasn't aware of all the houses. Um, but yeah, so it says Marxist BLM founder racks up million-dollar property empire with at least four homes. So all this money that they got from, let's say, the whole George Floyd and the whole many, many instances where they, you know, they did these things to, to raise money, be it uh, donations and, and celebrities donating and companies and everybody bowing down to these folks and giving them all this money and, uh, and becoming woke, as I like to say, uh, instead of going into these, you know, these communities and helping folks out. Uh, and, you know, maybe helping, you know, with uh, schools or education or stores or, you know, just whatever they could do for, for the inner city black community, uh, they decided to buy a $1.4 million home, a half a million dollar home, another half a million dollar home, and another half a million dollar home. Oh, it looks like uh, one is what in uh, Topanga Canyon, uh, was it? one's in Georgia, one's in uh, L.A., and one, or, yeah, South L.A., or is that Louisiana? And Inglewood, California. And I knew this. A lot of folks that have been following them and digging into the money trail knew this. Um, that that's what they were doing with the money. They were doing nothing for the black community. Uh, if you've looked at, let's say, Officer Tatum. Uh, uh, let me see, the conservative twins. Uh, there's, and there's many others out there. Uh, Jericho Green. Um, who else? Uh, Jay, uh, Jay, I can't think of his name, but there's a bunch of uh, black conservative folks out there who've dug into the money trail on BLM. And uh, yeah, here it is on the front page. And, you know, I'm not trying to piss anybody off in regards to what I'm showing here, but before you make a statement or comments, you know, do some research. Because uh, I hear this all the time, even on uh, talk radio, people call in and say the most absurd crap. And luckily, the host that's hosting that radio show is very educated and drops facts and knowledge and tells these folks the same thing I'm saying. Do your research before you make a stupid comment. 
<sighs> All right, but <laughs> sorry, I just because uh, I get those comments too, and uh, I try to. I, I I'm good at maintaining myself in uh, regards to this type of material, but you know I take that risk. I'm here on social media, and uh, that's just the way the game is played. All right, so let me see. Do I have anything else here? In the U.S., I do actually have one more article that I want to go over, and then we have a few clips that I'd like to share with you. And that should wrap it up. We got Australia, Paris, uh, Corn Pop, and Trudeau, <laughs> and Russia. Anyways, I want to share this real quick. I don't know how much of it I can really discuss, but I, you'll see the key highlighted words here, as usual. <coughs> Anyways, it says a dying Charlie Victor patient recovers after court orders hospital to administer that word there. It says an elderly Charlie Victor patient has recovered after a court order allowed him to be treated with uh, the medicine that he wanted, despite objections from the hospital in which he was staying, according to the family's attorney. After the Illinois hospital insisted on administrating an expensive, an expensive rendesivir, uh, to the patient and the treatment failed, uh, his life was saved after a court order that the uh, a court order that an outside medical doctor be allowed to use the inexpensive, the cheap, affordable uh, drug that you see there to treat him over the hospital's strenuous objections. So they they gave him the really expensive stuff and it did not work. Uh, finally, people, attorneys got involved, and his family got involved, and way against the hospital, uh, they finally let them use this nice, cheap, and affordable medication to treat him. And uh, it saved him. It saved his life. It saved his life. So instead of disregarding science, as they like to say, uh, and disregarding other doctors' opinions, uh, you know, and they, you know, when you go to the doctor and you ask them for something, let's say, uh, you know, you go to one doctor and he says, "Hey, this is what I think," and you're like, "Okay, that sounds great. Uh, I'm gonna get a couple of other opinions, you know, second opinion, third opinion, before you decide to make a decision on your health." And uh, it seems like that right has been pretty much taken away at this point in the aspect of that if you either take this or you don't get to take anything, unless you get attorneys involved and have to take the hard route. Anyways, I wanted to share that with you just because that's been something that's been talked about for over a year now. And, of course, it's been highly politicized, which is everything is at this point now. And here we are. Something uh, very inexpensive saves this gentleman's life. And I think, uh, you know, here in the United States, we as Americans, we have the right to choose, right, to choose certain things that we want to do uh, in the medical field of things, because it seems like OSHA was, or not OSHA, but it was like the, the HIPAA was just thrown out the window, like, hey, who, what's HIPAA? <laughs> Throw that out the way, no one matters about that. But all in all, something like that happened, and I was like, wow, if that could only make mainstream news, but you know that will not happen. That will not happen. You will not see that on any mainstream media outlet, guaranteed, almost 100% positive. Maybe I'm wrong, but I doubt it. I know I'm, Gray's getting a little overconfident. It just I just don't see it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, a lot of folks have been asking me, hey, what do you think about the whole Russia situation and Russia, Russia, Russia? <laughs> I just had to use it. But anyways, let me bring up, I'm going to do full screen on this one here. I think it'll be easier to see. Uh, Russia is making things happen. Russia is making movements. And so are the Chinese. Uh, and so is Iran. And so is North Korea. They're all doing stuff. And I think 2022 is going to be an interesting year, to say the least. So, folks, stay prepared, stay vigilant, stay informed, stay educated, please. Hopefully, we'll be right here on this channel uh, discussing some of this stuff and ways to be prepared and the best ways to do so. Let me throw it up real quick. Let me make it full screen for you guys to see. So it says here, it says, uh, Russia planning massive military offensive against the Ukraine involving 175,000 troops, U.S. intelligence warns. And as you can see, it says, these are kind of like uh, aerial footages, or yeah, aerial footages of what they're trying to explain and elaborate on. Uh, recently, uh, you know, arrived equipment is in yellow. Uh, and then location uh, of, what does that say, BTGs and some other stuff. But you can see there's a map 
of what the Russians are doing and how they're getting ready for this offensive. That being said, so things are heating up over there in Russia and as well all over the world. Uh, so there is facts. And we've been talking about it for a while that, you know, after the whole Afghanistan debacle, uh, what other countries were like, well, with him in power, he's not going to do anything. So we're really not really concerned about the Americans. Uh, who knows? With, uh, with that commander in chief, uh, they might have carte blanche to do whatever the heck they want. We'll see. We'll see as things develop and progress in Russia and in Iran and North Korea and China and everywhere else uh, that are doing things. I mean, even, <laughs> man, there's all kinds of countries arguing with each other right now about all kinds of different things. All right, so let's, uh, let's dive into a few of these uh, quick things here. I want to show you something in Paris, right? <laughs> we always talk, we always joke around about it, but we're being serious. The whole, show me your papers. It, and I guess now at this point, it's going to be show me your card or show me your phone. Whatever it may be, it's still the same premise behind it is show me your papers. Well, Paris, and, and it's funny, you think places like Paris, who in World War II, World War II, went through hellacious things and seen, seen how folks were treated. But here they are. Here they are. Let me show you this clip. These are officers here. Show me your papers, please. There's my papers. Ma'am, am I okay? Am I going to be arrested? Then they go on to move on to other places. Hey, what are you doing over here? Can you show me your papers? Oh, thank you. Your papers are good. No, that's your identification and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, this is happening, folks. This is Paris. And some people are like, gray won't happen here in the U.S. It is. It is. Have you been to New York City? Have you tried to go to a restaurant in New York City? You try to go to a restaurant in New York City, they're like, where's your card? Oh, you don't have one? You can't come in here and eat. And they're even applying this to the outside dining area at this point. So don't tell me this can't happen here, folks. Show me your papers. We've, we've already talked about, uh, what was it, India and a couple of places. Without your papers, you can't get gas. You can't get groceries. You can't do this. You can't go to work. You can't do nothing. That was in the last Sunday shift report. It's getting worse. And don't ever underestimate Big Brother. When you see in other countries, think about what's happening here in places like New York as it spreads like wildfire. Now, there is a caveat to this. And what I mean by that is if, let's say you live, I don't know, let's say you live in Texas, Florida, um, Idaho, uh, the Ozarks, you know, certain places where you have solid, uh, a solid governor running that state, a solid, you know, House and Senate, a, sol a solid government running that state. Because we are a republic of states. Because just because the federal government says something doesn't mean the state has to abide by it. And someone says, well, what do you mean? And I love to use this example because technically, let's use Colorado for an example. I use this all the time in my shop when it comes to uh, this age thing with nicotine and all this other stuff. But that's a whole other thing. But in Colorado and lots of other states, uh, cannabis is legal in that state. But federally, it is illegal. Federally illegal state legal. So the states have made their laws in regards to something like cannabis, and the federal government has its position on cannabis. So technically, I guess if the, uh, I don't know, what is it, the DEA decides to go to Colorado and harass someone because they're whatever they want, uh, which they won't because there's too much money involved and too many payoffs, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with cannabis, that's, that's up to you, uh, for you to decide, but all in all, that's to kind of give you an idea. If a state makes a law, that's the state law. And then the federal government has their whatever they want to do. And, God, I can go into the Constitution and explain some more of this. And it's very complicated to explain. But it's, it's a whole separation of state and uh, all this other. There's more to it, folks. But if you, dig in, if you understand the Constitution and you dig into it, states have their own rights. Their own rights to create laws and do the things they do and govern the way they see fit. So it doesn't matter what Corn Pop says. 
if you have a governor, let's say like Governor DeSantis here in Florida, and he says, yeah, I'm not having that, or I don't, I'm not going to abide by that. We're going to make our own state legislator pass some legislation ourselves through our House and our Senate here in this state, and I'm going to sign off on as governor, and that becomes law. Anyways, yeah, I just wanted to show you that, and it's just, man, show me your papers. Hmm. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll, I want to go, I'm going to go over, I'm going to cut into Canada real quick because I know I have a lot of you awesome Canadians in chat. Well, let's, let's listen to what Trudeau says. And he says it with like this disgusting smirk. Like he must, people, he must be, I don't even know. He seems like he'd be the most hated person in Canada, but he's still in power. But here we go. Check this article out or check this video out. Um, you're going to be able to get your vaccine as soon as you turn five. Uh, and I know you're excited and I know you're eager. Uh, in some places across the country, you can even start making your appointment now uh, for shortly after your birthday. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> did, you, did you see the smile on this man's face? Did you see how he's just like, he thinks it's a joke. He's, it's almost like he's laughing, like, I don't care what you guys think. And he's just there having a good old time. And, uh, man... You know, folks have said, you know, things that have been happening in Australia, which we'll cut to that clip here in a second. Uh, and then it's moving into Canada, and then it slowly filters down to the U.S. And someone says, well, are you sure, Gray? Sure. Let me show you this next video. I have a three-year-old. Is there going to be a time that that can, am I going to be okay? Is she going to be okay? Are he going to be okay? And let me say this, I strongly support the independent scientific view of vaccine uses for children under five. <clears throat> we can't take, take shortcuts with that scientific work, but I'll do everything in my power to support the FDA to do this safely and quickly as possible when we get to that around that point. And there you have it. Corn Pop is following in Trudeau's footsteps. They're all linked, folks. They're all this whole world government, they, you don't think these folks get together on some sort of probably Zoom meeting or some sort of encrypted conference call and say, hey, let's do this. Uh, as, as you see, it just trickles down. All the governments are doing some of this stuff like that. Now, I, I'm trying to think if there's, if there's any government. I mean, certain governments we don't have information on. Let's say like Russia. Russia will say things, but we don't know exactly what's transpiring there because – and just like China, just because they're a communist regime. Uh, and they only allow what they want to allow out. It's that simple. Now, of course, there's always leaks and stuff like that, but I'm sure even the leaks sometimes are probably just misinformation or disinformation, however you want to call it, you know? Anyways, those are those two idiots. And yes, I call them idiots. I'll probably get in trouble for it, but it is what it is. I'm an American, and I should be have the First Amendment of freedom of speech to say what I want. Just saying, it's those documents back there, supposedly, give us the rights to do so, our God-given rights. Anyway, some of you folks may have seen this. Uh, I want to share this real quick. Uh, this is uh, a lady in Australia who's in a Charlie Victor camp, a quarantine camp, or a, you know, camp, if you get what I'm saying. But listen to the discussion that she has with these folks. And if you guys remember, Auslander uh, was uh, in a situation like this not too long ago as well. And if you haven't checked out his channel, he had he, um, he was showing his daily uh, time while he was in there. It's AUS space lander l-a-n-d-e-r info maybe i'll put his link down in my description so you guys if you guys can click on it and check it out for himself uh great information great guy full of great information coming out of australia uh very educated person uh i love having conversation with him very intent like i said intellectual person anyways let me show you this clip give you a warning yeah it's an official warning that you have to stand above and obey the rules all you get yeah, yeah? And then we have to go to the rules again. I don't care. So am I allowed to go to the laundry? You're allowed to go to the laundry, but you've got to wear a mop, yeah? Yeah, right. And you definitely can't go up the fence anywhere else. So you're allowed to go to the laundry, yeah? That's always been the case, yeah? Right, so if I was sitting just here, which is right near the fence, why are these guys in a cabin that's right near the fence? It makes no sense, does it? Yeah, but you can't leave your balcony to go to the fence to talk to somebody else. So if I was yeah, at that balcony, there has to be lines everywhere drawn, yes. And one of the lines is you cannot leave a balcony and you cannot go to someone else. 
When it makes no sense or doesn't seem right to you, that is the line, and that's what the law is here, and that's how it goes, yeah? The law. Well, the direction. There's a law that says that. The show direction, that. yep, to the show direction, yeah? And how the behavior must become, especially in this area, because it's much more highly infectious, the life is going to be yeah? Highly infectious when all of us people are negative. So far, the risk is still very high, yeah? Mm. While you're here, can we just do that? Otherwise, the next time it's a $5,000 fine. We don't want to do that. It's a $5,000 fine if what? If, if you breach again. If, if I walk out onto that path. Without your mask on, for with, no reason other than If I cross that yellow line that I've broken the rule, I will be issued with a $5,000 fine. That's right. Right. Anyway, so $5,000 fine, and they have those lines and whatnot there. Uh, to me, quite intriguing, to be honest, to say the least. Uh, I don't know uh, what Aussies make financially, but $5,000 seems like a lot of money, folks. A lot of money inside these camps. And they're already being restricted in those camps, and who knows how many days they have to stay in there. I guess on the average, maybe 10 to 14 days. But that's crazy. That's absolutely stunning and crazy. I just don't get it. I don't get it. And I didn't want to over. I didn't want to talk over that, So I just wanted because I wanted you guys to listen to that. Uh, as I watched it with you. But all in all, folks, uh, you know, if you've got any value out of this, can you please hit that thumbs up button? And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It's always appreciated. Uh, and then tomorrow, say we got to got Monday, and we got a live stream on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a live stream on Thursday at 10:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We got uh, some prepping videos coming out. We got some good stuff. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll see how tomorrow plays out. Monday's always uh, give or take. Sometimes I get to make, I have the opportunity to make content. Sometimes I don't, but we'll see. I also got to go to the post office box and also look at some land. So that being said, this is Gray Man. I want to say thank you all for being here in the premiere. Truly appreciate that. Mods, you guys are wonderful people. Truly appreciate you. And if I did receive any type of super stickers, super chats, or any of that fun stuff like that, thank you so much for the support. It's always truly appreciated. Other than that, this is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys in the rebound. God bless, and please enjoy the rest of your day.